And the first challenge that faces them is the usage of water. We live in a water-stressed world. They operate in, I think, about 140 countries around the world. Many of them are water-stressed. And so communities are beginning to decide for themselves, where do they want to use their water? Do they want to put it into coke? Or do they want it to be used for other purposes? So suddenly there's a challenge to the organization about the availability of water. And that's a huge problem for them because they use enormous amounts of water. Coke, in fairness to, to that company, it has a number of strategies to address that. In fact, they aim to be water neutral at some stage in the future. In other words, they will not be using, overall, will not be used, taking water out of the environment. Um, when we talk about water, we're talking about fresh water, uh, drinkable water. Uh, so one of the things they are, are planning is desalination, they also recycle um, all the washing water that they use, etc. So they're well aware of the challenge, but you can see how important it is to the organization. It's no longer a question of responsible uh, corporate social responsibility. It's now key to the strategy. What about its carbon footprint? If you think of how much carbon they pump into the air around the world with uh, their processes and the transporting, etc., a massive carbon footprint as well. And again, that's a challenge for the company to address because carbon footprint costs money. If, if you, in, in many countries now, um, you have taxes and so on related to it. So it's a major challenge for the company to address that. But an even bigger challenge is the fact that people in, in the United States, in many countries, the proportion of people that are overweight is huge. In the US, 74% of the population are overweight. In Australia, I think it's 67. And there, obesity is a huge, huge problem for the world. It's probably the biggest health problem facing the world because flowing from obesity comes many, many different diseases. Diabetes, heart disease, etc. And I don't think it's unreasonable in the future that one day we're going to see health warnings on, on cool drink cans and other, other uh, food products. I was talking to um, a major investment organization, the person who's in charge of the investments in South Africa, but a, globally a very large investor. And he was saying how in the investment community people are beginning to look at nutritional value of foods and so you can see in the coke context and of course coke is very much aware of this they face enormous environmental and social challenges and it has to be part of their strategy as they go forward because they have to be able to show the investors that they have a future in this world now flowing from integrated reporting and addressing these kinds of challenges, the concept of integrated, integrated thinking has been born. In other words, organizations not dealing with issues in, in isolation or in silos. To solve these problems, you have to work in an integrated way. And one of the things that you'll find is when you produce integrated reports, you can't write in an integrated report unless management is pulling together, unless you have integrated thinking within the company. It's just a, a slide which I don't think you've got at the moment, just illustrating uh, how, how the world has changed over the last 20, 30 years. What that shows is the market capitalization of a company. In other words, if you had to take all the shares of the company and multiply it by its share price, it gives you market capitalization. And underpinning that, um, if you look at 1975, 83% of that market value would be underpinned by physical and financial assets. In other words, your cash uh, that the company has and the assets, its buildings and its plant and machinery, etc. 
83% would be underpinned by physical assets, and 17% would be other assets, what we used to in those days call goodwill, and tangible assets. Now look at 2009, and this is taken from many, many stock exchanges, and shows you that today only 19% of the value of, of a company's is based in its, on average, is based in its physical and financial assets. And 81%, or in excess of 80%, would be its intangible assets. And intangible assets would include human capital, intellectual capital, etc., etc. So, there's been a massive change, as you can see from that, as to what drives a company, what's important in a company as well. Integrated reporting has introduced the concept of the six capitals. Now the six capitals have been around for some time, there's a lot of research around it, but what integrated reporting is saying, that organizations need to look at not only the financial capital and the physical capital as we do in financial statements, but also report on those other capitals that they use in the business to be able to, to drive value creation. And that has been human capital. That doesn't mean to say that the company owns the people. It's talking about the competencies and the skills that those people have in the organization. Secondly, intellectual capital. Now, intellectual capital includes your brand. So in the case of Coke, it's the brand of, of Coke. But it's also about those processes in the organization that give it a competitive edge. When you walk into McDonald's, you know that you can get a hamburger within two minutes and you know what it's going to be like. Okay? Now they've perfected a way of being able to do that, and whether you're in Port Elizabeth, Perth, or Pretoria, or anywhere in the world, you get the same product. And that is what gives them the competitive ability uh, in the marketplace. And there are many, many examples. Obviously, every company has its, has its processes that gives it its competitiveness in the marketplace. And those are called intellectual capital. Um, it also includes patents, etc., and research and development uh, that, that has been done. So it's your intellectual capital, but also your natural capital. So a company might have water, it might have mineral rights, but it uses air as well um, and it can be a negative or positive thing so if, if you're pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere you're using and polluting the air and, and that's something that you're using so it's another form of capital that the company is using finally social capital it's interesting i belong to a, a group of, uh, of ceos in johannesburg from medium-sized companies and how they have recognized how important uh, social capital is to the organization and the, the need for engaging with your stakeholders because you need your stakeholders to be able to give you the social license to operate. We know what happened with Marikana, etc. Uh, today companies need to engage with their stakeholders, with the community, with their staff, various stakeholders, they need to be engaged with them, with their customers, to understand what their needs are and where they're going. I work for the Institute of Chartered Accountants, and one of our most important things that we do is to engage with our stakeholders, to try and understand what they want. That's why I'm here today, because you are all members, or possible future members of the Institute, and you are stakeholders of the Institute. And what we want to do is to be engaged, to understand what your needs are going into the future so that we have a product that is going to be around in 5, 10, 15, 20 years time. It's very, very important to do that because you want to be able to show your investors and, and stakeholders that you are an organization that has a future and is going to be able to create value into the future. Now here's a, a diagram that shows how the capitals flow into a company. On the left hand side you'll see 
the six capitals, and those are inputs to the business. In the center, you have the business model. In other words, that's the processes that the organization employs to create its products. So it might be manufacturing widgets. But what is also important and gives information for stakeholders and, and investors is what are you doing with the capitals? What is the outcome? Do you have financial capital to be able to go forward and produce, continue producing value in the future? Earlier in the week, I shared a platform with somebody from ESCOM, um, and I, uh, one of the things that, that we talked about was the problems that ESCOM is having, or has had, and the blackouts, etc. And in essence, what happened during that period, when South Africa was trying to sell cheap electricity and attract companies to the country, ESCOM didn't build new um, power plants they didn't maintain the existing power plants. In other words, they were not protecting their manufactured capital that they had at, the, at that point in time. So you've got to be able to demonstrate what you're doing to preserve your capital, to grow your capital. With human capital, you need to be looking at how you're educating, how you're training people, how you're developing skills within people. Very, very important. So all of your capitals, you need to be able to explain how you use them in the company, what they are, how you use them, and how you enrich them going into the future. Because that is the key to being able to make assessments about the future. Now, amongst the slides, there are just short descriptions of each of the capitals. I'm not going to run through them now. You can read those for yourself. 